Hello, my name is Kerry Arthur, and today we are going to take a look at another preview. This time it's Iron Father Ferros. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that correctly, but time will tell. Um, and we're going to take a look at what he can do in battle. I've not actually looked at this properly yet. I'm assuming that he's going to be good for vehicles, because that would make sense, because he is an Iron Father. Uh, it, it's, it's a sensible guess, you know, sensible guess. Let's have, a, let's have a look at what the lad is all about. Oh, we do have... Oh, okay, there's a little video, so... Let's watch that and then move on to what he does because they're doing quite cool things with the videos now. I do like the videos they put out for this stuff. The flesh is weak. For more than 10 millennia, we have lived up to this maxim. For more than 10 millennia, we have endured. For more than 10 millennia, we have defended the Imperium. Mankind teeters on the brink of annihilation and relies on our indomitable strength to survive. We will not be found wanting, for we are the Iron Hands! Follow me, Malkan Feros, your Iron Father, and by the blood of the Gorgon, we shall be victorious! Nice and hardcore there, yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Sounds a bit angry, not going to lie. Looks a little bit angry like that as well. So, Malcolm Ferros is the soul of the chapter, allegedly one of the oldest living warriors in the Iron Hands, and once he even counted the current chapter master card in as his pupil, he's been leading voice on the Iron Council for longer than anyone can remember. Been about a bit then. Been around. Been around. Not new. Not fresh. Not fresh-faced. A little babby tech marine. No, he's... Uh, Quite quite well established then by the look of things. So, Ferros has long believed that to sacrifice all emotion in favour of cold logic is to make the same mistakes that have plagued the Iron Hand since the loss of their Primarch Ferros Manners. To that end, he has resisted the level of bionic replacement so readily embraced by many of his battle brothers. You know what? Let's talk about that quickly. Stick his face back up, obviously, so you can take a look at that beautiful mug. What little you can see of it that remains. Anyway, I actually really like that. I think one of the nicest, well, one of the best things you can do to emphasise a particular trait is have something that contradicts it. So the the Iron Hand's practice of kind of significant bionic replacement is one of the things that makes them so interesting and makes them, I wouldn't say unique, because of course other chapters do practice bionic replacements, but the Iron Hand's have a much greater affinity for it, and culturally, as part of the chapter, it's far more significant and actually holds not really I wouldn't say a religious significance but there is there is definitely a culture there of that practice and it's the norm it's not just the norm it's essentially expected and and praised effectively actually having someone there who doesn't go by that standard provides a nice contrast that actually highlights how unusual that is and how much of an entrenched thing that is I think having that that kind of voice there of someone in a position of authority who actually doesn't exactly agree with the same practices of the rest of the chapter, all it really does is highlight just how interesting and unusual that aspect of the chapter is. It doesn't take away from it, it more brings it into the limelight slightly more because you've got someone who is actively not following it. And they, the, like the practice of not following it kind of highlights it even more. It takes it out of the realm of being, well, that's just what they do, and then brings it, I think, into into closer scrutiny of, okay, that's the thing they do. Should they actually do it? Contrasting that, I like the fact that he does have that disagreement there, and he has resisted bionic enhancement, because it really does actually indicate the, like, the extremity and the unusual length to which the Iron Hands go in terms of that particular practice. It's it's good. I like it. I like I like seeing that like contrasting thing thrown in here and there because it it does provide a nice bit of emphasis. It highlights things that I think we just come to accept as normal. It's like, well yeah, that's just what the Iron Hands are. They just do that. That's just part of who they are. Actually having someone in there who's like, we probably shouldn't kind of sheds it, kind of moves it into a different light and makes you think about it slightly differently. So, yeah, I like that. So, 
I've lost where I am. There we go. By contrast, when the opportunity to cross the Rubicon Primaris was presented to Pharos, enhancing his strength and endurance through biological rather than mechanical means, he took the plunge without hesitation. Again, yeah, I, yeah, not, yeah, I like it. I like it. It's, uh, again, yeah, it just brings out the personality a little bit more. Actually, what does this, what has this dude got to say? So, it is this master of the forge, Malcolm Pharos says, a titan is a mighty weapon of the Omnisia, Omnisia, sorry, but without the fires of its reactor, it is but cold, dead metal. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. I'll give him that. Okay, so, one of the things what he does is the rite of severance, where he chops off the hand and replaces it with an iron hand to... Honor, Iron Hand, the Primarch of the... We won't do that all over. <laughs> we won't do that all over again. He's got Harrow Hand, which he uses to chop off the hand. Excellent. And I don't know why I keep saying and instead of hand. He's got Harrow Hand that he uses to chop off the hand, and also the ridiculous <laughs> like backpack-mounted heavy bolter, which is called Gorgon's Wrath. Excellent. And obviously he's in Gravis armor, complete with platform boots, as you can see. Just in case you need reminding. There he is. Okay, what does he actually do, though? Let's get on to the interesting bit. So, he has a stat line of 5-inch movement. Fair enough. Weapon skill, 3 plus blitz skill, 2 plus strength, 4, toughness, 5, wound 7, attacks 5, leadership 9, and a 2 plus save. Nice. That's, yeah, no, that's that's decent enough. In addition to a pair of servo arms and bolt pistol sidearm, I keep having to remember what an actual sensible stat line is, because the the army I've played the most games with recently is 13 Dreadnoughts with, admittedly, three Tech Marines who have never, ever got into the fight at all. One of them fires a conversion beamer every now and again, usually just for shits and giggles. I don't really expect to hit anything with it, it's just there for the crack. Um, they mostly just stand at the back <laughs> and repair stuff, so... Genuinely starting to forget what an actual, just a normal infantry stat line looks at, <laughs> looks like, because I'm too busy looking at dumb Redemptor profiles all the time. Okay, so, in addition to a pair of servo arms and bolt pistol sidearm, Pharos bears two relics of the Iron Hands, Harrow Hand and the Heavy Bolter. So, Gorgon's Wrath is 36 inch range, heavy 3, strength 5, AP minus 2, and damage 2, and Harrow Hand is obviously melee, it's an axe. Plus three to strength, minus two AP, and two damage. Again, yeah, decent enough. So, with his presence a lot... In fact, actually, with Harrow Hand, he could... Mm, yeah, no, if someone walks up to him, he could do some nasty work to them. So, I like that. Just packing a little bit of a punch there. With his presence alone, Pharos will anchor any Iron Hand's line. Not only does he ignore wounds on a 5+, plus, thanks to his Artifice Bionic ability, but he provides an invulnerable save to nearby units. Hmm, all right. So, rights of tempering. Models in friendly Iron Hands units have a 5 plus invulnerable save whilst their unit is within 6 inches of this model. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, I mean, it just the way that's worded, that'll apply to vehicles as well. I'm 99% sure that'll apply to vehicles as well. That's quite nice. Ooh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Starting to get a bit more tasty now. A bit more tasty at this point. Also got the Sigma Ray, so at the start of the shooting phase you can select one friendly Iron Hand unit within three inches of this model. Models in the selected unit have a ballistic skill characteristic of two plus until the end of that phase. Again, nothing there to suggest that it wouldn't work on vehicles. So, <laughs> I'm starting to really like the look of this. I'm really starting to like this. I'm getting, I'm getting there. I'm getting moist. I'm not going to lie. I'm getting mildly moist. Master of the Forge, when this model repairs a vehicle model using its blessing of the Omnisire ability, that vehicle model regains up to three lost wounds instead of up to D3. So he just maxes it out every single time. Okay, all right. This is, yeah, he's looking, he's looking tasty right now, to be honest. So try accompanying Iron Father Ferros with a pair of Redemptor Dreadnoughts. Well, current count... I've got six of them, I've got three Mortis Dreads, three Contemptors, and a Leviathan. So I, 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 I can technically do a pair of Redemptor Dreadnoughts, I can also just do 13 Dreadnoughts. So I am I'm, I'm think I'm set for that tactic. Not only will they benefit from a 5 plus invulnerable save, so yes, it does apply to them as I thought, but Ferris will be able to repair them on the go. 
and he'll repair them for max every time, and with the help of his Signum Array, you'll be able to pick one of them to average 10 hits per turn with a heavy onslaught Gatling Cannon, even if it's badly damaged. I, I'm there. Fully damp. Fully damp at this point. Moist. Real moist. That is exact. It's like someone sat there, right, and went... Now... Now, they, now, what could we do? What could we do to make Kiriath happy? What could we do to achieve that? What could we do to to make the guy with an army comprised almost entirely of dreadnoughts really, really happy? Oh, oh, I know. We'll we'll make a guy that that just by standing behind one of three will give them an invulnerable save. We'll also heal them for three wounds every time, and can make them hit on a 2+. plus. We'll do that. We'll do that. That'll make him happy. And they were correct. They were absolutely correct. It did make me happy. Oh my god. I will absolutely take it. I will take it. Yes. Thank you. I'll have one of them. I... It, can I have more than one? <laughs> Is that allowed? No, it's not allowed. But I absolutely would if I could. Oh man. Oh. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. That's nice. That's nice. Okay. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. I'll be buying I'll be well, I'll just be buying in this the minute he comes out then. I can't dislike that. I can, you know you know, I can mess with things on the model that I'm not too keen on. But the rules, I don't want to mess with. I just want to keep them forever. He will never leave my army list now. It's just always going to be in there. Technically, that means... I mean, I know I'm running them as Iron Hands. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. He can just have a rusty paint job. It's fine. That sounds like a euphemism for something, doesn't it? Anyway, that is Iron Father Ferros. I'm a happy camper. I mean, I'm liking it. Like, loving his work. Absolutely loving his work. Cannot wait to put that in my <laughs> to put that in my army list for my dreadnoughts. Between him and two chaplain dreadnoughts, I'm I'm set. I'm set. Although I do mm, no, it'll have to be three chaplain dreadnoughts because I need another detachment for the Invicta war suits as well. Either way, he's he's joining. He's joining the party. He's joining the crew. He will be in the dread mob. I can't not have him because it. Why would it, that would be? Like, actually idiotic. If you're running them as Iron Hands anyway, why would you not take him? Why would you not? It'd be ludicrous not to. I'm happy. Super happy with that. Right. Let me know what you think of, uh, of the new Iron Father in the comments down below. As always, feel free to click the various things. Patreon, video, subscribe, all that shit. Click if you like. Don't click if you don't want to. And there is, as always, a affiliate link in the description for Element Games. What if you click gives me a little something if you buy something from them from clicking that link. It's a nice way to support the channel because you say between 15 and 25 percent off whatever it is that you buy, be it paints, 40k stuff, Age of Sigma stuff, bolt action stuff, basically any tabletop game ever. Um, and it doesn't require any extra effort. You were going to buy that stuff anyway, let's be honest. And yeah, it's a nice thing to do if you wish to support the channel. But you don't have to. It's entirely up to you. I leave it in your capable hands. I will see you for the next one. Toodaloo.